This part of the beer is phenomenal, though. This is outrageously good. It is, it is one of the best things I've ever had. So but this is like a tale of two cities here, or whatever, uh, uh, Jekyll and Hyde. All right. All right. Welcome to Talking Beer. I'm Ryan. I'm Brett. And today uh, we got some uh, weird treats here. I have a beer that has been sitting in my fridge since the... September 26th of 2001. I'm happy to know that it was in your refrigerator. Yeah? Why is yeah. that? Well, because it does. It takes beer. Takes care of beer better. Good. The, the cold. Um, this actually came from my college roommate, Chris Musial, and I don't remember why, but somehow that's how I ended up with this. I actually have one, but I didn't take such good care of it. It hasn't been in the refrigerator since then. It was sitting on a shelf, and then I put it in the refrigerator some years ago, and it's just been sitting there. Actually, I mean, it's in my basement. Should actually, it's a Millennium right? bottle. What's the date on that? Oh, so mine's is... actually older. Mine's the 99. Huh? Well. Wow. So, we also have a blueberry. Um, you want to talk a little bit about this guy? Because we did sours last week. Yeah, we brought this with us, but we didn't drink it last week. I just, I, I love uh, blueberry sour beer. I'm excited so to try it. it. <laughs> I, I am excited to try it. Um, I like blueberry, blackberry, raspberry, mainly blueberry, blackberry. I don't yeah. know. That color of fruit is better for me, I guess. I don't know. I just like it better. Everybody well, likes their own thing. I like purple. We're going to have to make sour. sure we bring a boysenberry in for you to try. Oh, no. I, I love I would never eat a boysenberry, but the boysenberry sours are, sours are awesome. I love them. Um, I don't know, even know what a boysenberry looks like, but I love boysenberry sours. Well, you should watch this week's episode, last week's episode. And you'll Why, know. you showed one? Yeah, you did? You <laughs> ate one on camera. What? Yeah, you'll see. <laughs> All right. Brett hasn't watched yet, but he'll see. Um, what else we got? I have a beer that my good friend from Clemson sent me that lives outside of Richmond, Virginia. Um, and we should have drank this already, so we're definitely going to drink this today. This is called Never Gonna Get It Cubed. Cubed. Uh, it is a triple mixed berry goza ale, 5.3%. So a goza is a German style that has salt in it. Uh, a German style wheat beer that is like a Broner Weiss, so it's tart, but it has a little bit of salt in it and the finish. Sure. This is a triple, instead of triple hopped, it's triple buried. Triple buried. Right, okay. so it's super fresh, and it actually says drink today on it, so it's definitely out of code. Never going to get it three. And it's two weeks old. Okay, well, I'm excited so to see that, too. So it should be interesting. Uh, this is Blue Point's Beach Plum Goza, a kettle sour. It's not so kettle sour where it's puckery. It's nice and drinkable. It's got a beach plum, which I guess is native to what, New Jersey, Long Island, that area. Okay. Uh, it's a fruit that they can get on the beach there naturally. Um, counterweight, counterpunch. I gotta awesome say, fresh IPA. I really like Counterweight's um, logos and their design. I think they're very clean and smooth, and I, it just draws my eye. But it anyway. does. I do like his labeling. He does a great job. But even more importantly, every single beer has been awesome that I've yeah. from him. I mean that Cotterpin. Matt Westfall. Awesome stuff. That Cotterpin we had a couple weeks ago was. Yeah, and he keeps knocking me out with new styles there. too. Like, I don't even know some of them, and it's another new one, and it's awesome. And I'm glad everybody likes him because I read reviews on his stuff, and everybody likes it. So uh, I'm really happy for him. He's doing some great stuff, and he has a cool ship in his place. A cool ship is that natural, spontaneous fermentation Belgian right. thing that I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, He's only used it once, and the beer is, I hear, is phenomenal. It's still in wood Okay. after it came out of there. So it'll come out, I think, soon-ish at right. some point. I'm looking forward to having that. Well, we'll have to like make sure we announce it. Yeah, about it a for sure, bit. for sure. Maybe we can get Matt to come to one of these. Yeah, two. or we can go down there and take a look at the we can barrel. Oh, we, we should get. Yeah, we should see this cool ship. Show yeah. people what the cool ship looks like. And then our experiment that yep. we're doing, uh, it's with the guy from Blue Point, Dan. Uh, we're drinking a Julius every Thursday for a month. Yep. So this week will be our second week, um, and then next week you're going away, but we have one. 
refrigerated for next week for you and me. I'll bring and in one with me. He's bringing one on vacation <laughs> with him, so we'll Skype it in and see uh, how we're looking. The reason we're doing that, we're testing out that can shock theory, which I don't necessarily believe, but we're going to do it and see what happens. Right. So, like, I still think fresh beer tastes better, but I'm hearing all this information about can shock when it comes to, and if anybody missed last week's episode, we're talking about can shock is something that happens in the can over time where it's not better to drink it when you just get it. It's better to wait when the beer is two to three weeks old and it tastes better then. I hear it all so the time. Aging in the can, essentially. Right. So Which, it's going to flavor or settle in the can, correct? That's what we were talking We talked about, about the fact that since, the, since these type of New England style IPAs are not necessarily finished, not everything has been crashed out and finished, so there's still residual sugars possibly in there. Right. And then some yeast in there. Right. The yeast is still alive because it's not pasteurized, so over that two-week, three-week period, maybe the yeast is eating that residual sugar and cleaning up the beer. Okay. I don't know. We're going to do the experiment. We're going to yeah. talk about it. We're definitely going to drink that today. We don't drink all the beers, but I do just happen to bring everywhere I go, I bring too much beer. It's just the way it is. such a problem. Uh, Hugarden, which I think is the best Belgian wit ever. I think that all Belgian wits are modeled after this. It's phenomenal. I always loved it. And just so we're, no, I said Hugarden. It looks like Ho Garden, but it is Hugarden. There's hoes in my garden, though. Yes, I have one okay. in my garage. Uh, the uh, Michelob Ultra Pure Gold Organic Grains. Organic Grains. All right, tell me about it. Organic I don't know. Grains. We're going to drink it. All right, well, let's start it. drinking. Well, I would say, well, we, we, yeah. And then this other one here from Vermont, a new one that my buddy Matt Hoffman gave me. Um, Ten Ben's Beer, Northern Light, Northern Heights. Northern Lights. Uh, Vermont style double IPA. We just drank it. It's pretty good. Fruity. I do. I like the label too. To be honest, it's hazy. It's got that cool color. Yeah. I don't know. Colors always bring my eyes in. I so. like trying new beers. Um, so what are we gonna go after? Do we want to drink the old one? We want to drink the Julius? Let's drink the Julius. Let's drink the Julius. Just so we can talk about what we were just talking about, and I don't want to forget and run out of time. All right. All right. So this is. Week two, a two-week-old Julius, and let's see if there's any difference. I'm going to try to get... It looks the same as last week. Last week's side-by-side, side, maybe. Uh, it smells just as good as last week's. I love this beer. All right. All right. So, do you think it's better? Worth saying? I do think it's better. I think there was a little uh, bit of a grit, like a, like. You're saying this week there's a little bit no, of a grit. No, I think yeah, I was gonna say I think this is a little. Uh, Maybe that little grit. Not that it was grit, but I don't know another word to describe it. But it was a, just. This is like fuller. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> this seems fuller. It seems like, um, and maybe it's just the way you poured too. I don't. But that's definitely... That's awesome. Nice and smooth. All right, hold on Wow, so if it's better in three weeks, then next week I'm going to be on vacation. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> All right, this is going to drive me crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, when I say that maybe I tasted a little bit of grit, maybe it just wasn't exactly 100% perfect. It was still pretty damn perfect, but now it's even maybe more perfect. I think, personally, that it just seems smoother. Like, just to the mouth. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big that's, difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like more crushable. <laughs> it's super clean. It's awesome. All right, what's next? All right. You want to drink the old one? Yeah, I kind of want to pop this baby and see well, what we happens. Could, why, don't, why don't we do this? Because well, this is going to take some time to open. Yeah. Why don't we pop something? Sounds like a plan. See how you do with this one. All right, you can be a camera guy. This is a uh, tripod I built for uh, doing 360 photos, video tours, photo tours. So, anyway. It's a, it's a it's bottle a opener. It's a bottle opener. It's a good bottle opener for Brett. <laughs> um, okay, so this Ooh, is... I can smell that. 
That's nice. The farm barrel. Farm to barrel. That's some nice blueberry funk. Yeah, it is. Whew. So when I say blueberry funk, what I mean is the Britannomyces worked in the wooden barrels so with the airborne bacteria from Colorado. The Britannomyces is a yeast. California, San Jose, California. I learned that two weeks ago. And then you mentioned two other things. I mentioned lactobacillus and, and uh, something else. Which those are bacteria. Correct. But we don't want those. I don't. I'm not. I don't. But it's a good bacteria. It's a good bacteria. Uh, there is good bacteria in beer. One of them makes the beer uh, lacti lactic acid. Just, so it, it makes it smoother. And the other one, but more sour. And the other one brings out more of a sour. Yeah, form. I'm spacing out on what the other main bacteria is: Lactobacillus and Pediococcus. Pediococcus, yeah. Yeah. Those are, as you'll remember from last those week. Those are the main ones. There's other ones, too. Yeah, those are the main three. Um, and those are defined in our last episode. So this is some nice, uh, dank, lots of blueberries. When I say dank, I mean there's a lot of blueberries in here. This is an expensive... The reason why these are expensive on the shelf is because they're using a ton of fresh fruit. And it's expensive to do that. And um, that's what makes it so expensive, I guess. Yeah. All right. But it also what makes it so good. Because if you do it less expensively and you use puree and extract, uh, it's just not as good. It's funny how the, on this, the, even the top got brittle. I'm in my hands. Hmm. Everything is like brittle in there. It's old. And... It's got a cork. <laughs> I hope it at least pops. That would be nice. There we go. I had some pop. Even the cork is like. That's a little bit closer to the same flavor. The old bud. So, bud, let's not go too heavy on this. So, 2001. Oops. <laughs> I do that every Ooh. time. That's got a funk. Hmm. I'm keeping this cap. I collect caps. Oh, look at this. I don't know if I can get this thing off of here. Look at how cloudy that is. How much stuff is hanging in there. Yeah. I wonder what that stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Yeah. Sorry. Your beer, Budweiser, is Good not... Good thing I asked for a dump cup today. Is that going to last till 10... What is that? I just don't think that it was really designed to... No. Sit on a... Hold sit up. around. So, well, 125 years. If I'm being honest, so, it absolutely does not taste like a Budweiser. But, it does not taste bad. No. Technically, it doesn't taste bad. It just tastes super malty. It's, and the, the hops are dead. Flat. And like super flat, so it's like. But it obviously is not going to kill us, or we wouldn't have done no. it. And for what it is, it was a good experiment. So, if so you now I'm going to drink the one that's shelf, two years older. <laughs> <laughs> Brett has one sitting at home that's two years older. Um, so if you have one of these sitting on your shelf, we'll just tell you right now. Don't, don't open it. Don't bother opening it at this point. It's a nice shelfy. Yeah, just keep it on the shelf. All right, so... All right, we have to open up this one. All right, let's open up this guy. Um, this is our... I think it's going to explode a little bit. Never going to get it. You've, oh, oh, yeah. You feel the tension on that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's well, not good. Let me see a second. So... Yeah. There's... There's... A physical tension here. I mean, you can feel that this is, like, tighter than all the rest of the cans. Yeah, so that means that there's a lot of yeast in there... Produced a lot of CO2. All right, you hold. So that beer is alive. You hold this, and I'll see if I can. Oh. Yep. There it goes. That wasn't so bad. No, it wasn't so bad. But 
frothing up like crazy. Let's take a look. Wow, that is like that is super dank. That is beautiful juice. Holy cow. That color is poof. It's like we're eating a a whole plate full of Yeah, this will be the last beer for this session. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, as you can see, Thank it's, you, Greg. it's very, very thick, very, very dark. It's hanging on the cup. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, let's have a sip. Maybe you take this one. I don't want your mouth. Wow. I don't want your lipping. All right, so what am I right. drink? What am I, I drink that when it first got to my house? What am I drinking? I had two here? cans. Triple mixed berry That's goes. Taste goes right. Really freaking good. Really fucking good. I wanted to swear today. I didn't. I got to swear. It was one of my goal. One of my goals for today's episode. Wow. Your goal was to swear. That's why I asked you if it was okay earlier. This is an adult show. If you're a child, don't tune in. Yeah. No. This is 21 and up. You can't drink this anyway. Yeah. This is even though this is. Literally juice. Yeah. But there's alcohol in here. So let's talk about that. How much alcohol is in here? This is 5.3% alcohol by volume. Do sours and fruit beers tend to be on the higher side? No. Ghosts, Brown devices are lower. You can get sour beers that are more like 7, 8, 9. Okay. Uh, uh, but the Gozes and Broner Vices are traditionally five and under, or around five. This is, I this is, just one delicious. I mean, this is four point one. I don't know if you can see that. You're gonna drip down the camera. It's gonna be fucking hilarious. I'm okay with is that. Is it pouring straight up? Yeah. Oh, that is nice. So, this, as you can see, is super thick. So you're sniffing my beer. So now, all right. This is That's like, actual fruit that just came out of there. Yeah, you can see. All right, so now, beer. now, now we're looking at a milkshake. So this is separated, this beer. This Whoa. is... The rest of the beer is three dimensional. <laughs> this is like drinking. Um, it's not moving. The rest of it's not moving. It's like it's like drinking a smoothie. Yes. Well, we haven't gotten to the smoothie yet, but that part is. All right. I don't want to pour that in my glass. The rest of it, that's different. The rest of the can is different. It's not what we have in our glasses right now. Yeah. It started to. There you go. Yep. So, so when this came out originally, this wouldn't have happened, right? Oh, it did. Like, um, less, obviously, right? Maybe. Hoping. Hmm. Uh, yeah, less. I would say that when I got it and I drank it fresh, this much of it was fruit hanging. Milkshake. Yep. And then now it's here. So how did it get... The time shake. Time in the yeast being alive. Wow. And I guarantee when we pour that into a glass, I want to pour this into a glass. Let me grab a glass real quick. Pour this, just pour that fucker out. Yeah. Here it comes. That's not so bad. It is chunkier than what we're drinking though. Absolutely. So, if you could see that. I don't, that's, that's actually nice. That's not too chunky at all. Oh, yeah. We gotta bring some of that to Ben downstairs. But it is a delicious milkshake. I, I mean, it's this is just literally a delicious um, fruit, fruit smoothie. That's basically the best thing I could... I'm really enjoying this. Me too. Mm. All right. Well, this was hard to get. I went through a. I'm gonna just rinse pain it in the ass to get this 
fucking beer. So I'll how, tell you. So how did you, uh, how did you get this? It came out, and as we can see, it's Clemson colors, purple and orange. Boom. So it flies up on the radar, and it's like, all right, my buddy Greg moved out of Richmond, and I was like, all right, can you go back to Richmond and get this? And he went and got it, and then he's like, and then I'm like, ooh, whoa, if you're going to get it, you better send it to me quick, because I already see posts of cans exploding. Yeah. That's why I was saying it was tense, because sure. if it gets even more tense, it's going to explode, and that's the yeast expanding and making everything more into more space than it was in the can so that's why it was blowing up some people's cans were blowing up wow so i was like you got to overnight it <laughs> and i guess i get a discount at work because i didn't realize how expensive it was to overnight it and he's like are you fucking kidding me dude i just fucking sent you that beer i'm never gonna do that again ever it was so expensive and i'm like i am super sorry man I, I definitely didn't intend for you to spend that much money on sending well, me a beer overnight. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> it was delicious. I would highly recommend it. If you can find this on the show. I repaid him back, though. I overnighted yeah. him some fresh IPAs from around our area well, here. Some nice. We just nice got idea. it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I made sure I overnighted it, though. I wanted to make sure it was still cold. <laughs> so, uh, on a side note, Rising Pine. Oh, yeah, that thing. We're bringing that back up. Please come. It is a, a nice educational beer fest that we can have the opportunity to have an awesome time at. Yeah. The music is going to be phenomenal. The band Rift is playing. I just saw them on Saturday night at New Park. The place was like had more people in it than I've ever seen, actually, in one place. It was just super tight, and I felt really kind of old just in there. Like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> With all these kids. But I had a blast. Well, that's good. <laughs> and uh, there's a, a horn section, which Brett has. Mm. I like to hire a horn section for these bands because uh, it's different and it adds a collaboration. Yeah. Which is what we kind of like to do with some of these beers. Yeah. Um, not that anybody did it here, but collaboration is cool in beer. They were doing it. Everybody's collaborating and sharing ideas and really, you know not competing with each other just sharing good stories sharing good beer stories this is how we do it this is how we make it great and and passing it around it's great it's awesome it's a good good time to like craft beer it's a good time go out of the website risingpint.com um i'm working on our website it'll be up in a couple of weeks it's gonna have a lot of functionality You're probably gonna have an app that goes with it really yeah so um I'll let you know when that happens, when that's all done. Uh, thank you for tuning in and subscribe, tell your friends, pass it along. Cheers. Share a beer. Actually, you know what we gotta come up with is a closing thing. Like yeah, a, share a beer. Like a thing, you know, like mm. like our own sign off dealio thing. Yeah. What a, if you gotta sign off for us, let us know. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>